Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this episode of uh, Roadrunner Sim Flights and it's the first video of uh, 2017 and uh, a new year brings a new aircraft and as you can see today we are flying the brand new FS Labs A320 and we're going to operate the early morning flight from Zurich to Paris on the Swiss flight um, let me check the flight number Swiss flight number 632 over to Paris Charles de Gaulle, which just received a new scenery by Tag to the Gate recently. And uh, catering is ready, so we uh, gotta get started here. Okay, so uh, we're now in the Airbus cockpit, which is quite different from what you're used to on this channel. If any of you happen to watch other videos on my channel, you would know that this is the first time ever that I'm using an Airbus on this channel and it actually it is probably around the uh, third or fourth time ever that I'm using an Airbus so this video is gonna be a little bit uh, experimental so there might be things uh, which I would do in the wrong order and uh, I'm sure there'll be things I'll be doing entirely wrong so Please bear with me on this experiment uh, onto the Airbus A320. Okay, so we are um, operating the uh, flight over to Paris, and so let's load up the aircraft. So Swiss on the A320, they have a configuration of 168 seats and. This morning we are simulating a, few, a full load of passengers. Um, that gives us a uh, zero fuel weight of 60.9 tons, which I already entered in the wrong field. It's going in here, and our fuel on board today is 5,456. Uh, kilograms. Okay. So all right, so let's go to the init page where we're gonna enter our departure and destination airport. So for this aircraft, I don't have a company route safe forecast. I'm on Windows 7 and I haven't yet figured out how to how to properly export a route from PFPX. So I'm going to enter the route manually today. So we're going to go from Lima Sierra Sulo Hotel over to Lima Foxtrot Papacol, which is Paris Charles de Gaulle. Our flight number this morning is uh, Sierra Whiskey Romeo Swiss 632. Cast NX is 30. Our cruise level on this short flight is uh, 280. And the temperature on cruise level, let me check PFX, is going to be minus 45 degrees. Let's add a minus 45. Okay, so catering is finished. Let's close the doors on the right side. So let's enter the uh, zero fuel weight on this part of the init page. And we also gotta enter the uh, fuel on board, block fuel, which is as we just said, 5.5 tons. And on today's flight, we're gonna have tailwind average tailwind component of 14 knots. So this aircraft doesn't yet simulate the uh, wind uplink like you gotta have in the uh, PMDG aircraft. So we can only enter an average wind component, which on this flight is an average uh, tailwind of. 14 knots. Okay, so that's the init page. 
Let's go to the perfect. Not yet, probably. Uh, let's do the flat plan first. So, we're departing from uh, Zurich and we're going to depart on runway 28. So, let's select the uh, runway 28. And our departure is gonna be the wee bit 3 whiskey departure. So let me just uh, recheck that on the charts if that's correct. Yeah, that sounds good. So it's gonna be wee bit 3 whiskey. And there's no transition, so we can just insert that straight away. So now we got the wee bit uh, 3 whiskey departure in our flat plan. And from wee bit, we're gonna use airways. So to enter airways, we gotta select the uh, first waypoint of the airway and then select the airways. Okay, from wee bit, we're gonna take Tango. Five one. That will take us to Lassen. And from Lassen, it's on Uniform Number One Seven Six over to Lumel. And from Lumel, it's Uniform Tango. One zero to Torpa. I will actually uh, start boarding now. Okay, and from Torpa, we're going on uniform Mike six twenty four on to uh, the uh, Lima uniform Lima. You are probably. And from Lima, Uniform Lima, it's Uniform Uniform Quebec 238 to Tango Romeo Oscar, which is also the start of arrival into Paris. So now we enter the uh, Entire route up to the start of the arrival into Charles de Gaulle. And at Charles de Gaulle, we are going to use the. Uh, so let's just uh, have a look at the current conditions at the Charles de Gaulle. But I think we're probably going to use the 8 or 9 runways. Bring up weather here. Okay, so uh, we got winds 160 degrees at 10 knots, so that's probably a crosswind either way. So, in the real world, they're currently using the uh, runway 9 or runway 8 left or right. So we're gonna use runway uh, runway eight right for or rather eight left for landing. So let's select arrival. We're gonna use ILS runway eight left because that's closer to where we're parking. Because if we would use the nine right or nine left, we're gonna have a very very long taxi over to terminal two where we're parking. And our arrival is into Paris. Is gonna be. Tango Romeo Oscar 7 Echo Rival. But, uh, squirrels for all these arrivals into, into Paris here. It's a big airport with lots of arrival procedures, apparently. Hello. 
Okay, your thing will only ask us 7 echo. And approach we are, so let me check the approach chart. I know I wrote the transition charts. That'll be the uh, Okipa 3 echo transition. So let's insert that. Case of Tango Romeo Oscar, which is the uh, Troyes VUR. The Troyes VUR will be going to Urello, and then Okipa, which has started the transition into the arrivals for uh, eight, 8 and 9 runways, and we're taking Okipa 3 Echo, which is the one that on the south of the airport, which takes us on the back first to runway 8 left. So from Keeper we're going to the Colomies, Colomies VR, Charlie Lima Mike, then to Mosut, then it's off to Papa Golf 503 and then it's Vectors. Yes, manual, so it's Vectors up to onto the outlet localizer. Okay, so that seems to be a pretty good fly plan. Let's go to the first page. Are we going to enter takeoff data? Let me just run the performance calculation in uh, PFPX. So we're going to take uh, flaps, flaps 1, and our flex temperature is going to be 53 degrees. Okay, so let's enter the V speeds, which are VR 140 knots. Okay. So as far as I can tell, which is not telling a lot, we are done with the uh, MCDU setup. So let's have a look on the outside and see what's the loading of the aircraft. Uh, how is it progressing? So we're pretty much done with loading the cargo. And I think boarding of passengers already completed, so let me just check at the GS GSX. Yes, passengers are already boarded, so let's close the left side doors. And I will start up the APU. So we're currently on external power. And one thing that I always uh, did wrong on the first few flights is when switching over to the APU. I always uh, managed to turn off the electrical system completely and I lost all the uh, things I put into the MCDU so I had to start over again. Okay, so what's left to set is the QNH, which is 1019 on this winter morning in Zurich. What's Set it one, two, and three times. 10, 19, local pressure, and the initial climb on our arrival. So let me get back to the strict charts from the Charlie Gold charts. But just have a look at the initial climb on our arrival is probably 7 0, but I'm not sure. Let me see. Oh, it was actually 5 out of feet. And transition level, or rather transition altitude, is 7000. Yeah, that's the 7000. And actually, I think, yeah, the Airbus uh, A330 uh, somehow manages to extract the correct transition altitude, probably from the Navigraph 
and I have database, so it's normal applied so far is always set correctly. Okay, let's check for the APU. Okay, APU is online and available. So let me think if there's anything else to set up on this Airbus here. I don't think so. Uh, Pre-flight items are already done in this panel state I used to make it easier for me and boarding is completed just now. Okay, so it seems it seems we're good. Let me just do a quick check on my travel lever. So yeah, that works as well. And let me just check the spoilers. Yeah. Okay. So very good. Okay, we're gonna close the cargo doors. And let's request pushback. No, we're not gonna the ice, even though it's minus three, we're just gonna skip that. Most of the right. Let's take out the nose wheels during pin and disconnect the Hello, we are ready for pushback. disconnect the ground AC and disconnect the GPU, which will cause the system to switch over to the APU by itself. Let's take off the wheel chucks. Okay, fine. Let's bring up the progress page here. Okay, let's put on a beacon. Seatbelt signs already on. Okay. Let's bring out a brightness here a bit. A little bit. Actually quite a bit too bright for my for my liking. Okay, let's take off the parking brake. So we're gonna wait for the engine start until the push is completed. Just as GSX uh, told us to, so we can enjoy this little wing view while uh, while they're pushing us back. So the weather this morning in at Zurich is uh, winds are completely calm and the visibility is 6,000 meters. So as you can see, it's a uh, foggy winter morning and temperature minus three degrees. Yeah, let's set the brakes. And we're gonna start the engines. Starting number two. And we already got some kind of error, which is because it didn't switch on the APU bleed.
also telling me that the center of fuel pump has low pressure, which is probably because the center fuel tank is empty. And that means I'm going to cancel this message. Okay, we, can't, we, have to, we probably have to deal with this uh, in-app system messages later on, so I'll start the engines first and then we'll see. Okay, apparently messages, messages the status messages uh, or alerts even clear themselves out, so. or maybe not, so let's wait for the engine, number one, to start soon. And we'll see. So pretty much every time I use the Airburst there are some, some items coming up on the uh, status page, uh, some systems turned out to be an operative for some reason. Okay, let's check, okay, let's, see. let's check on the fuel page if there's any indication, okay, it seems that the indication is cleared of itself, so I'm going to assume we're good, okay, let's set the flaps to 1, 1 plus F even, um, auto brakes are going to max, well as armed. Okay, let's put on the uh, taxi light. Okay, so we can now switch off the APU bleed. And we can also switch off the APU. Okay, so we're gonna taxi out to runway 28, which can be a quite short taxi on November. Fox Drive in there and and Alpha. Let's remove the parking brake. And we gotta press the uh, comma key to actually enable the uh, nose wheel steering. Or rather, like, uh, enable the rudder controls to control the nose wheel steering. Let's apply a bit of power. Taxing with this aircraft is not something that I'm very good at, so we're probably gonna see wild behavior like going from left to right, like I'm driving it, this aircraft while I drunk. So be prepared for that. Let's do the take-up complete test, and it's, it's normal. So we got all the I items for the takeoff uh, completed. Here it says predictive bin shear is off, and I got to admit I actually don't know how to operate the system or where to switch it on or whatever. So we're gonna leave that message as it is because I don't know how to resolve it. 
think so that turn went pretty well actually. Let's put on the terrain on this MD. Slow down a bit and take this turn. I think slightly overshot, but still okay. Well, is this is what I was talking about. Yes. Yeah, so steering is uh, really oversensitive here in this aircraft. I gotta uh, gotta tune the settings probably and, and get it right. But for now, this is what we're what I'm gonna deal with. So yeah. Okay, so we're now taxiing on on inner and they'll take us on to alpha which will take us to runway 28 Put on the constraint data onto the MD. Okay, so here on tax we alpha we're gonna alpha one we're gonna line up onto on the two eight. I'm gonna turn on the transponder right now. Let's slow down here. Okay, he doesn't want to slow down apparently. Okay, now I slow it down. Oh my god. Okay. So I'm actually going to come to a full stop here too. <laughs> before we're gonna start a takeoff roll. Also braking on this aircraft is not that not all that easy, so I'm gonna put on the parking brake for a short minute. Okay, so let's put on the uh, landing lights and the turn offs and put the nose lights to takeoff mode. And I'm also gonna put on strobe. Okay. So let's turn off the rudder and nose wheel steering link. Play off the parking brake and let's set the flex D10. Okay. Power set. And let's 
rotate. Europe. Um, put on the autopilot. Okay, so 2900 feet we're gonna be reducing to climb power, so this is gonna be right now. So, trust climb is announced on the uh, PFD, and we just uh, put the throttles onto the climb detent. Set the altitude all the way up to 280. Okay, we gotta uh, retract the uh, flaps. As you can see, there's a pretty uh, nasty uh, wintry weather outside, so nothing much to see. Weather in Paris is going to be fine, probably, yes. at least uh, according to the METAR I checked before I started recording, the uh, weather was uh, kept okay, so we're going to have clear skies at Paris, uh, apparently. Okay, let's disarm the uh, spoilers. Let's set the standard pressure by pulling the uh, pressure setting knob. Which probably has some extremely complicated name actually. So. Pressure setting knob, probably not the official Airbus term for this knob here. Probably the uh, barrel selector, whatever. I don't know. Okay, so uh, this flag is unfolding pretty well up to now. So we are got no problems meeting our constraints in this uh, departure. So 6,000 feet or above at the uh, Sulu Hotel 554, and 7,000 and above at Sulu Hotel 558, which we are already. Uh, which we've already cleared a while ago. Okay, let's turn off the landing lights and turn off lights and the nose lights. Okay, and also turn off the seatbelt signs. So, the sun is rising over Switzerland. So, the aircraft is now accelerating up to. Uh, 311 nuts, apparently. And I forgot to start the chrono, of course, so I'm not gonna bother switching it on right now because it's not gonna be accurate anyway. Okay, so now we're in climb mode and the, ac the uh, active mode is managed climb. Okay. So 
So let me recheck. Let me recheck the uh, weather in Paris. As I just said, we got the cavalcade at uh, winds at 160 degrees, 10 knots. So clear skies with a uh, little bit of a wind. So we already set the arrival um, before our departure from Zurich. So all our settings can uh, stay as they as they are. So we are using uh, runway 8 left for arrival into Paris. And the throw, throw arrival procedure. Let's check the uh, retina page. So the uh, ILS frequency for runway 8 left at Paris already uh, set into the ILS field, which is uh, 108.7. Okay, so this went a lot better than I I thought, or rather I feared. I feared I was gonna crash probably on departure or like taxi the aircraft under the grass or something. Which didn't happen, so that's good. Okay, so we're now climbing through flat level 150 and I'm gonna leave you guys uh, until we're closer to our top of descent into Paris and I'll see you all then. Cheers! So welcome back to the flight deck. Uh, we're now about 10 miles away from our top of the sand into Paris. So that means we are going to set up for the descent. So initially we're gonna I think we're going to descend down to obstacle constraints in this arrival. I think that's So let's do 2160 initially. On this aircraft, we have to initiate the descent manually so it doesn't descend by itself. When reaching the top of the descent, we have to uh, push the, uh, the altitude selector button to initiate the uh, managed descent which we're gonna do in a few seconds okay right now actually okay so now descent mode is engaged
so the uh, trust is coming back to Isle and we're starting our descent towards uh, Paris on the Tourier 6 Echo arrival. So weather in Paris is unchanged from what uh, I was uh, telling you before. We got the uh, cable case, guys, and uh, winds now from 150 knots, uh, 150 degrees, of course, uh, 10 knots. So we're gonna enter that onto the uh, approach page which is right here so the uh, QNH down at Paris is 1013 which is a uh, standard pressure temperature is 8 degrees actually it is pretty warm compared to uh, uh, Eastern Eastern Europe or even Central Europe like in Switzerland or maybe part of the Himalayan Street so wind is uh, 150 at Transition level is already set correctly. So let me check the charts for the decision height for the minimums for the uh, approach. Let's bring up the chart for Lima, Foxtrot, Papa Golf, and we're using uh, runway 8 left for landing. Runway 8 left. Okay, so we're going to intercept the ILS uh, glide path at 5,000 feet and we're going to use the CAT-1 MBA of 540 feet. And we're going to use uh, COMF full, so our landing or our, our v app is going to be 141 knots. Okay, so the runway uh, runway 8 left is 4,140 meters long, so let me just set all the brakes to medium right now, which is something that I forgot on almost every single flight with the A320 so far. Okay, so the approach page is filled in. All right. Okay, let's set down the altitude uh, to 9,000 feet. So our descent from our low flight level of 280 went uh, really, really fast today, so let's put on the default signs. There's some clouds uh, currently at this position of um, for a flight so there's apparently no clouds over at uh, Trace Shell de Gaulle. At least according to the VTAR there aren't any clouds. Okay. Again as far as I can tell we are set up uh, as required currently but let me just uh, select the display of the uh, localizer indication on the PFD right now. Just turning on course to Okipa, which is actually the end of the uh, proper uh, star procedure, and takes us on to the uh, transition for runway. 
uh, 8 left or right, which is the Okita 3 echo transition. Or are we gonna wait for ourselves down to the ILS course? Somewhere around the uh, Liberty Airport, probably. Or alternate, uh, the primary alternate would be Paris or Lee Airport, which is on its southern side of the city. But I don't think we're gonna need the alternate today, because lighter is supposed to be cavalcade down at Paris. And we're flying offline today, there is no traffic either, so there's no reason to assume that we're gonna uh, be in need of uh, diversion to any kind of alternate airport. Okay, so we're below the cloud layer, apparently. Or just breaking through the cloud layer. Okay. The aircraft is slowing down, which is probably because some speed restriction set on the uh, arrival procedure. Flying this aircraft is still a really big challenge to me. I'm always uh, looking out for things I may have forgotten to, to set or something. As you can see, I'm just uh, panning around the cockpit constantly to detect possible errors that I made and makes us uh, crash on, on approach or something. So forgive me for the uh, unstable camera on this video. Okay. 30,400 feet right now and there's some turbulence going on apparently. So our arrival is gonna take us uh oh transition rider is gonna take us uh via the uh, uh column yes VR Charlie my Mike to most suits, we're going to turn on to the back horse, right the, the, the uh, downwind lag, downwind lag on the approach, and we're going to wake ourselves onto the ILS somewhere around here. So actually here, somewhere here is a Liberté Airport, probably this one here, LFPP probably, yeah, that one, Lima Foxtrot, Hopfrau is a Liberté. I'm always uh, very tempted to take over the descent into VS mode as I'm used to do or into open descent mode I used to do on the Boeing aircraft like using flat level change or using the VS mode so um, but this aircraft really has quite a good automation built in so probably we should we should trust the aircraft to manage the descent. But I'm probably gonna take it uh, manually, or rather on the uh, open descent or VS mode at some point, probably, because I'm not uh, too confident yet. Okay, let's have a look at some of the systems. If there's anything that will uh, indicate some abnormal. Indications. Doesn't seem to be the case, probably. So status is on status page, okay. No alerts on status page, which is good. Okay, so now we're passing, uh, or close to passing, then I have to beat them by. Put on the uh, landing lights, probably turn off. Okay. Little breeze there, probably when the scenery um, is loading. So as I mentioned before, scenery is made by 
taxi to the gate and it's brand new scenery released about two weeks ago. And it's pretty good, I'll tell you that. We are some turbulent, so oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna select the altitude down to 5,000. So now we're slowing down to 250 knots, or even 220 knots actually. That's what uh, sets as a constraint at most suit. So I think I'm going to ignore that and go for 230. I'm going to use uh, yes mode. So unfortunately it seems that in yes mode there's no indication on the ND uh, when the aircraft's gonna reach the uh, set uh, altitude or set level. Just like in a Boeing aircraft we uh, get those uh, range rings, looking like this arc, tells us when we're gonna reach the uh, set uh, level. When this aircraft is currently only in the open climb and managed climb modes or managed descent or open descent modes, there's a uh, one of those things, okay, and now, okay now, now it appears, so maybe maybe it does actually appear in this mode as well let me see if that changes the indication it makes it go away, okay let's see if it reappears so what I was uh, trying to say was, uh, I think that uh, in BS mode this aircraft does not give a prediction of when it's going to reach the set altitude on the ND, so we'll see if that arrow is going to reappear or not. Okay, we can probably wind down the descent right here. And I'm going to set the local pressure, which is equal to standard pressure in this case. 10.13. on the backup PFD as well. Okay. So the airport is uh, down here. That's a massive airport. Because we are currently got a really uh, strong crosswind of 34 knots. Pretty much straight on crosswind, and actually on our approach, we're gonna also gonna have a crosswind uh, of uh, 10 knots on the ground. So we'll see how that's gonna uh, turn out on the approach. Okay. This repaint, I think this repaint actually has yellow tips on the this, these fairings on the. Uh, right side but it doesn't have those on the, on the left side but it's a kind of a uh, a weird repaint here okay so there's Paris City loading in. This is a standard uh, uh, prepared city scenery. I didn't install the uh, Reaver city scenery that's available. I always forget to forget to do that. So yeah, I should probably should do that and do another flight, maybe out of Paris uh, to somewhere else on Air France, perhaps. Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna reach 5,000 feet way early, so I think I'm going to go down further and intercept the ILS on, let's say, uh, 4,000 feet or so. Let's reduce down to 220 knots. Okay, so here's the uh, city in all its glory. So over there is probably uh, Paris, Paris, uh, Paris Orly Airport. There's the Eiffel Tower, actually. Okay, a windy, a windy morning arrival into in the Paris, apparently. Okay, so we are receiving the localizer indication. Um, yeah, identifier is uh, Golf Lima Echo, and with the correct localizer, play left. So we're we're good. We can turn on the localizer. It's identified. Okay, let's slow down a bit further. Be two one zero knots. Let's check the uh, activate the approach phase. And we. Uh, Okay, so clean up to 208 knots, apparently. Okay, so there's the uh, glide pass coming through. And we're about to level off at uh, 4,000 feet. Still some heavy turbulence going on. Oh my god, that's heavy. Okay, so let's turn to the right. Gonna engage a localizer capture. I'm gonna bring down the flaps to one. Slow down to one nine zero. Okay, so we're going to capture localizer right any second. Okay, right now it's a lock star is announced, so look while the capture and they're gonna arm the approach mode. And the nation second autopilot. So collide load capture is armed and we're currently turning on to localizer. Okay, so there it is, a massive uh, Paris trail to go. Turn on to the uh, ILS mode on the ND. So a glide pass is coming in. I'm gonna bring down the speed uh, to be configured early on because 
And this kind of turbulence is always a uh, good advice to be configured early. So this here down is, this down here has got to be a uh, uh, Leprechaun Airport. Okay, so localize our uh, glide path even though it's, uh, it's captured and we're descending on a glide. Okay, let's put on the auto brakes. Arm the uh, spoilers. Now set flap two. So let's bring it down to the VF of one three nine. And bring down the gear. Oh, flap three. So sun is uh, currently blinding us on our approach here. I'm not taking the flaps to full. Let me just check if I read this correctly. Okay, it's 139, not that's correct. Our missed approach is 5000. Set that. Okay, so we got, we got Cat 3 deal. Okay, currently 14 knot crosswind, and we're now stable on the approach. That's always nice. Okay, I think we're fully set, so there's no no blue on the on the ecam, which usually means in the airbus that everything is fine. So we're gonna assume that everything's fine. One thousand. Okay, one thousand. Check. That's a nice view. So there's the northern runways over there. Okay, so I'm gonna land on the uh, cockpit view this time. Hundred above. Okay, so getting ready to uh, idle the idle the throttle on the three targets we called. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Retard, retard. Okay, retard. And reverses. Let's 
disconnect the auto brakes. Okay, so auto brakes brought us to full stop on the runway. So let's uh, turn off, use the time, turn off the lights, and bring on taxi lights and turn off the strobe. And we're gonna switch on the APU. I have to fix the point of view apparently because this is really not nice what's happening now. Okay, so let's switch on the uh, nose wheel steering. Silence the uh, autopilot disconnect and watch some drunk uh, taxing again. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm probably we're gonna be fine. Okay, so. Yeah, so taxing is a. Breaking and taxing is still rough on this aircraft for me, as you've probably noticed. Okay, so where are we on this airport? So let's check. Oh my god, braking is such a pain. We're on Whiskey Tango. Okay. Whiskey Tango. Okay, so let's go straight on. Um, so we're currently on Whiskey 4 and we're crossing Whiskey Tango and continuing on uh, Whiskey 4. Okay. Put on the APU bleed. Disarm the spoilers and bring off the flaps. Okay. So we're where actually are we are we parking? So let's park on uh, terminal two on the Foxtrot gates probably, so let's taxi uh, onto here. Or we might even we might even uh, let me see. We might even park here in this uh, extension terminal S3. I'm not quite sure if that's accurate to real real world parking position, so but I think I'm gonna park on Echo 17 Echo 17 No follow me And we have the Aeroport de Paris to service our aircraft Okay, so we, we have to turn here, okay Let's turn A little bit more. Okay, turn here. Slowly but surely. Very nice, very nice. Even I can learn to turn this aircraft at some point, probably. This airport is uh, equipped with South Chatway, so we're gonna try and uh, see if the jetways are going to work. So Echo 17, let's not turn off the annoyingly bright taxi light. Okay, Echo 25, Echo 21. The next one is supposed to be Echo 17. That's a nice scenery. Okay, so there's Echo 17. Well, let's turn the aircraft around. Okay. Oh my god. 
Jesus Christ. Okay. So we may actually be able to park it half decently. Let's break, break, please. Okay. Not that much. Okay. Power points? Okay. More power. Stop the aircraft, stop, 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 stop. Okay. Set the parking brake. Okay, so we're gonna set the uh, ground jacks and connect the GPU and the ground AC unit and we can turn off the engines. Which are left on ignition now for the whole flight, apparently. Okay, very good. I'll turn off beacon light and we can turn off the APU lead and turn off the APU altogether. Okay, now. The engine is apparently not stopped according to the GSX. Yeah, the they are stopped. Engine 2 is still. Okay. okay, now it's, uh, it's pulling down. Okay, okay, now it's working. Operate chatways. Can we operate that chatway? Confirm selection. Let's see on the outside. Yeah, chatway is actually moving. First request of the boarding. Apparently, I made the same mistake again. Didn't actually um, engage external power, so we have to switch over to external power. So I turned off the APU without uh, switching over to external power, and that um, yeah, powered down pretty much the entire system. Good thing it didn't happen uh, before departure. So let Okay, it doesn't work. Okay. Sorry about. Okay, this doesn't work either. Okay, so uh, unfortunately I can't open the doors apparently because the uh, MCDU doesn't work anymore because I happen to I happen to turn off the power. And alarms are sounding. Okay, that means let's uh, leave the aircraft and have a look on the outside. So probably a good idea. Aircraft is all screwed up, and we're like just leaving the aircraft and having a look from the outside. Okay, even though we can't open the doors because I uh, powered down the entire systems, we still made a pretty successful flight over to Paris from uh, Zurich this morning. And I hope uh, you all enjoyed yourselves. And if you did so, then like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you all next time on the drunk taxiing at Roadrunner Sim with the Airbus A320. 
five flight and laps are uh, cheersing goodbye.